Now, the, the last remaining three questions are all about Minimax search. We were talking about, we started talking about games last time, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is uh, adversarial search. <laughs> adversarial search. Um, wouldn't it be better to have a pre-calculated database of Minimax values for nodes rather than generating them every time? It's so tiresome to generate all those nodes. Why don't we just keep a b database of minimax values? Does anyone remember what a minimax value is? No, Dan thinks he knows. Anyone else think they know? Adam, you think you know what a minimax value is? Well, I've learned that in the past, but I'm starting to guess. Okay. What's a minimax tree? Want some minimax <laughs> nodes in a tree? Yeah. yeah? Okay. For me, a minimax node is like a triangle. And the question is, are you a max node, which means you point up, or are you a min node? Do you point down because you're trying to make the cost go down? And uh, so this is the minimax tree. We have a move for max at the top and then a move for min. And it's funny because I actually know AI researchers named Max and I know another AI researcher friend named Min. He's Vietnamese. Uh, his, his first name is Min. It's spelled with an H-N. Um, so, <laughs> no, they're both very friendly, actually. Um, although this new motion planning algorithm does kind of step on the toes of <coughs> Max, um, but he's a nice guy, so I, I don't think he'll beat me up. He might. He might send his robots to beat me up, though. <laughs> he has a lot of robots. Um, so this is a Minimax tree, and. Ideally, you, you, you construct this minimax tree all the way down to the terminal states of the game, where it's game over, you know, win, lose, and you know, one, negative one. Um, in, in theory, so, so a minimax value of a node is what you get by pushing the tree all the way down to the terminal, the leaves, and percolating the values back up, and the percolating what do I mean by that? Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask Jonathan instead if you prefer. I'm just thrilled with the word percolate. Perc per 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 percolate? Yeah. Coffee? Yeah. Tea? Hot steep beverage day. Mm. Um, Yeah, we're not talking about dynamism here. We're not dynamic changes. We're just talking about if if uh, if if this is worth a three and this is worth a four, then uh, what's the value of this position here? Shh. No. <laughs> no. 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 Who controls what happens here? Uh, Min controls. My good friend Min Do controls what happens here. And he's trying to minimize the score function. So this node is a 3. This node is a value of 3 because if gameplay ever reaches there, we know what Min's going to do. He's going to choose the better way to go for him, right? Because he gets to choose. And we're assuming here that people are playing st are, are strong players they're going to take the, the right they're going to do the right thing we're we're making a very conservative assumption that our opponent is playing well um, we want the best assured outcome for ourselves so if we go here there's no assurance we're going to get the 4 we're, m we're in fact much more likely to get the 3 so the value of this state is 3 now over here you know maybe things are different maybe uh, maybe it's just really bad over here. <laughs> Maybe the, the, the terminal states here are 0 and negative 1, and therefore min here is, of course, going to choose the negative 1. And now what's the value of the root node? What's the, the minimax value of the root node? Three. 3. Yes, exactly, because we control what's going on. We want to maximize things. This node has a value of 3. And so when I said, I think I said, yeah, at the very beginning of the game part, um, there are, like the chess tree is really colossally huge, and the tree for checkers is also colossally huge, but 
someone has actually managed to solve the, the game of checkers, meaning that they computed the minimax value of the root node, like the true value, um, which is just, uh, just an amazing uh, <coughs> feat, if you ask me. Yes. Well, depending. Maybe checkers is rigged such that the first player always loses, in which case the best the computer could do would be to lose. <laughs> I believe, if I remember properly, the answer was that the root node of checkers was a draw. So it is possible for either player to win uh, at the beginning. It's not a foregone conclusion one way or another. Dylan, did you have a question? Oh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. These are just two. I mean, I haven't ordered the children here. Maybe I should. I I thought the the min node was supposed to order children. Uh, maybe I'm just misunderstanding. I thought that the min node was trying to uh, place the lower child. Ooh. Okay. You're you're thinking of something very advanced. Um. So. I'm taking an abstract mathematical object and I'm drawing it on a two-dimensional piece of paper. What significance do left and right have? Well, before, I've always been assuming that in a depth-first kind of search, we would go to the left child first and then the right child. And we talked, when we were talking about branch and bound and depth-first search and stuff, I, well we didn't really talk about depth-first search very much. When we talked about CSPs, for example, chronological backtracking, um, we assume the algorithm is going to go here first, and so we want the, which value do we want to explore first in a CSP? What's the general value ordering heuristic? It's like most or least, something, something, something. Anyone remember how we order values? Kendall? Anybody? Tyler? Least constraining value. We pick the most constrained variable, the one that has the smallest domain, and we order the values from least constraining, the one that causes the fewest deletions in forward checking, to most constraining. So we visit the least constraining first because it's, it's very compatible with all the other values. We haven't ruled out a lot of other solutions. We're more likely to get a solution down that way from what we can tell in just a superficial analysis. Um, so now Dylan's now looking at my minimax tree and saying, well, whoa, what, what's this negative one doing over here? It made sense the three was here because men should be picking this child first. So uh, this is a good question. Um, so first of all, you can't always correctly order your children. If you were, if you could, then we wouldn't have a search problem. Um, do people typically try and do move ordering? I, people do try and do that. Um, so it's more likely that this one would have a lower value, but it's by no means guaranteed. Yeah. Any other questions about this cute little minimax tree that we got here? Okay. So uh, wouldn't it be so everyone now knows what a minimax value is? You know who came up with this minimax thing? Claude Shannon, inventor of information theory, like big name from the math department. Claude Shannon, very elegant French guy, professor at MIT. Actually, I don't think he was French, but he looks very French to me. So I've always thought of him as French because his first name is Claude. Um, uh, yeah, I should show a picture of him at some point. Really dapper guy. Uh, Claude Shannon, so he came up with the Minimax tree, just so you know. Uh, so wouldn't it be nice to have a pre-calculated database of Minimax values for nodes? Yeah, sure would. Why is that totally impossible? Mm. What's wrong with a lot of branching factors? It takes time to have a big branching factor. So instead of generating a bunch of uh, values, it's space Why is space going to be a problem if I want to build a, 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 a database of minimax values for something like that? Yeah, 
yeah, like 14 to the 40th, which is a really, really, really big number. It's a really colossally huge number. Um, uh, 14 to the 40 is like something E45, which is really big. Really, 7 E45 is a really colossally huge number. Lee? Well, if I had that many bytes of storage, it, life would be good fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 well, I think it's colossally impossible. I mean, th the 45 zeros, I, like, we're never going to create something that has that much memory, are we? Like, I don't know. Well, I, not I shouldn't put limits on the bounds of human creativity, but what, what, what part of the universe are we going to have to take over in order to do that? Anyway, it's going to, because space complexity is too big to make a database of all possible minimax values. Jeff? As though y y your opponent may not always do things which would, I guess, like affect you in a negative way, but affect them in, in, in a positive way. It might not be a zero-sum game. We, maybe we could all win. No, no, it, no. Again, I'm, I'm just thinking of like, like. I wish. <coughs> like I'm thinking, like if like video games start in the beginning and everyone's you know just building stuff, mm -hmm. your, your opponent could be doing things that just doesn't hurt you at all, but that helps. Their economy, it's not minimizing your score at all. But if you look at just like. Oh, I think score. your opponent is probably trying to minimize yeah, your it's score. Not it's not just better. you're not going to find so out so till so quite a ways so away. So you'd have to put things like that that help them but don't directly hurt you into a form to calculate like this is harming me. Oh, so okay, so okay. So, so the, the, if someone just talks about the minimax tree, they mean the minimax tree that goes down to the final end game. So the depth for something like StarCraft would be colossal. I mean, I don't know how many typical moves there are in a StarCraft game, but I'm guessing like hundreds or thousands. So, uh, and the branching factor is pretty big. There are like a number of things you could do at any one time. So that's like a very large game tree. Um, now, I like if you construct that game tree and back up, this are called minimax backups. I forgot to write the uh, three up here for the value of the root. This game is a th has a value three. Max can be assured that he can get a, a, a value of three. I mean, even if this is like a 10 here, right, the, the value of the game is still three because min is going to take the negative one. Um, so, so, uh, So the, the minimax value is with respect to the terminal states. So it may have backed up through thousands of time steps. I mean, it could be that an action I take now has no effect on the future, in which case fine. Um, but it could be that, you know, 100 years from now, something's going to happen. If you ever read those Douglas Adams books, they're always full of crazy coincidences like that. Like the guy takes a swig of, of of some cocktail which happens to kill the bacteria that's in his stomach that was going to kill him if he hadn't had the alcohol. Something like that. But things like that are always happening in those books. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, so a pre-calculated database of minimax values is, is, uh, is not possible. People often do things though like um, in, in real game programs, like, have a database of endings. So, for example, there's a database, like, once you have six or fewer chess pieces on the board, people have databases of, like, what's the perfect thing to do. Like, all positions with six pieces or fewer, like, that's been calculated. Um, so, there are end game databases. That's, that's very popular. Nathan? Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. 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 The the y you can think of the happiness of you and the other person as always summing to zero. Um, so if yours goes up, theirs has to go down because the sum has to be zero. 
Frank. Oh, I usually don't ask that until the exam. Uh, but if you want me to give away the answer now. Um, so, so, uh, so what do we do? Actually, that's a qual question. I put that on the qual. Um, or I did one year. Uh, so, so, yeah, boy, this is a very non-deterministic class. You guys like talking about, about non-deterministic environments. So I could have a move that could lead to multiple outcomes. Like in here, here we've got a single move that has two different outcomes. And maybe this is like with probability 0.5 I go here and 0.5 I go here. And here's another move where with probability 0.1 I go here and 0.9 I go here. Um, so if I'm trying to compute the minimax value of of the root here, and let's say I backed up one, two, three, four. So this rings a bell, Dan, doesn't it? How are we going to do this? Yeah, so we get half of one and half of the other, and we get one tenth of one and 0.9 times the other. What the hell is that going to be? Let's see. Uh, 0.1 times three is 0.3. I can do that much. Um, th three ninths. So this is 0.4. No, point, uh, uh, 0.39. What? 3.9. 3.9. Um, so this is called expectamax because you're taking the expected value. <laughs> it's not that lame. It's kind of cool, I think. It, it reminds me of expectorate, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so that's, so, so that's what you do for probabilistic actions. Um, now, it could be that there's actually only one player, and instead of facing an adversary, you just have stochastic actions. And that, then you don't have a minimax tree anymore, because there are no min nodes. So here you're facing both luck and an opponent. I guess there are a lot of games like that that have a die and another opponent. Yeah. 